Welcome to this video series on using the BBC micro bit. In this first video, I'm going to show you how to get started with a micro bit, how to write short programs using a code editor, and then how to download them onto your micro bit so that you can show them to other people and use them in the real world. Now, there are a few different code editors for you to choose from, and you get to them all by going to microbit.org in a web browser. And once you're at the Microbit website, you will see uh, a few different options, one of which is Let's Code. Depending on your experience, you probably want to pick um, one of the top three options. The Microsoft Block Editor is a really straightforward, very quick to begin um, editor that uses blocks a bit like Scratch. The Python editor uses the text-based Python programming language, which if you've done any of that before, um, is really fun to actually be able to start doing things with your micro bit using Python. Uh, but the top option from Microsoft, the PXT editor, um, is the newest one, and it's probably the best one to work with because it has a really good uh, block-based visual editor, but you can also switch into text-based editing using JavaScript, um, which is a, a, a really good way to uh, learn a little bit about text-based programming, and it lets you just do a few little tweaks, and it does give you access to a few more advanced options that, given time, you might want to play with, such as full Bluetooth control and other things like that. So we're going to start off by using the PXT beta editor. So once you're into the PXT editor, one of the first things you'll notice is this big empty area. This is where we're going to put our blocks and we get each of our blocks from these drawers here. So under basic, there's a few different blocks. We can show a number on the screen. We can light up LEDs on our micro bit. We can write a message. We can clear the screen. We can make things happen forever. We can do some pausing. And there are other ones as well. Input has several different options based on the various inputs and sensors that are built into the micro bit. And underneath more, and some of these drawers have more, you'll find a few more advanced settings in there as well. Music will let us play some tones and music using the output pins on our micro bit. The LED has lots of controls for um, individually uh, altering or making things happen to each of the LEDs on the front of the micro bit. Loops. Um, is all about program control, making things happen repeatedly um, either a certain number of times or until a certain condition is met in our program. Under logic you'll find all of your selection statements like if and if and else. Under variables you'll find the option to make a variable and change variable values. Under math, which annoys me that it doesn't have an S on the end, you'll find various mathematic operations and random number generation. Radio is really cool. Radio allows you to send messages to other micro bits using its built-in antenna. And under advanced, you'll see some more options for if you're making games, um, images to make larger images, pins for controlling or responding to um, signals going on the input and output pins on the, on the micro bit. Serial is getting a lot more advanced now. Now we're starting to talk to other devices and control, again, probably you're not going to use this straight away. This allows you to just put some more program control that's um, a little bit more advanced than just using loops and selection. So let's make our very first program. And all it's going to do is simply just say a simple hello message to people who might be looking at the micro bit. So to send messages or write messages on the, on the screen, we're going to use the basic draw, then we're going to grab the show string. We drag and drop it onto the editor. And once we've done that, you'll notice that the simulator on the left actually updates and shows us the program running on this simulated micro bit. If I want to change the message inside, I can just type something else. So I could say hello there and click off. And the simulator will update and show us what this looks like. Now, if I wanted to do uh, something a bit more advanced, maybe I wanted that to just repeatedly um, show that message on the screen. I could grab a loop. Or oh, actually, no, this is a basic one. I could just do forever. And I can drag that on, and I can drag my show string inside, 
and now it will continuously say hello there on the screen. Notice that as when I have a block selected by clicking on it, I get a little bit of information just telling me how it works and what that block does. This can be really useful and if you want to find out anything more about it, you can just click on it and you'll go to a little reference page which is a little bit like um, a dictionary or an encyclopedia sort of entry all about that block and it gives you examples of how it works and gives you a bit more information to find out. So if you're not sure about any blocks then the best way to find out is just select it and click on it down here and then that will take you to that little bit of reference information. Okay, so we've got our program, it's working, it does what we want it to do, so let's put it on the micro bit. To do that we have to press download and we'll get a little box that comes up saying connect your micro bit to the PC using a USB cable, save the hex file that it's going to give you to your computer and then copy it to the micro bit drive. So, just have a look here, this is my, the bottom of my Chrome browser and it's downloaded my .hex file. So I need to now put this onto my micro bit. So here I've got a micro bit. Um, I've got my buttons here, my A and my B buttons, and I've got some LED lights in the middle. On the other side, you'll see that we've got the BBC micro bit logo, and there's a few connectors. There's one to put a battery, there's a restart button, and there's the USB connector which will power our micro bit and also allow us to transfer data onto our micro bit. So we want to get this now connected to the computer so that we can copy the file over to it. So in order to do that we're going to use this little micro USB socket. And I've got a USB cable here which is connected to my computer. So as long as I get that in the right way around it'll start lighting up that shows it's got some power. It should start flashing which tells me that it's talking to the computer. And over on my computer if I now go into my, so I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go to the Finder, but on a Windows PC you just go to this PC, and you'll notice under your devices I've got one called Microbit. And if I click in there, that is all the files that are on my Microbit currently. Um, now, my little hex program has gone to my Downloads folder, so I click on Downloads, and I'll see it's there, Microbit Untitled.hex. So if I want to put this on my Microbit, I simply click, drag, and drop it on microbit. Microbit will then start flashing away while the data is copied over. And once it's finished flashing, it will restart and it will show our program. So that's all there is to it. You're going to use the PXT editor at microbit.org to make your programs. Once you've made your program and tested it in the simulator, you download it. And once you've got your downloaded hex file, you simply drag and drop it onto your microbit drive on the computer, and then you can see your program running on the microbit. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that you've been able to get a little program running on your microbit. Um, and then once you've done that, I'd really encourage you to look at some of the projects that you can get through the Microbit um, PXT editor. They've got some great built-in projects to teach you um, how to get on and make some other applications. Um, and there are loads of resources online to learn from as well. So good luck and enjoy using your Microbit.